A common criticism newer Pokemon games get is that the formula has gotten old, and after 25 years, it's kind of boring. As a newer Pokemon fan, I've only been playing Pokemon games for five and a half years, so it hasn't gotten old for me yet, but I can see the argument. Game Freak has tried to do minor changes such as Mega Evolutions in X and Y or the Trial System in Sun and Moon, and while these were nice changes to the series, fans still seem to have the same criticism about the series. However, on February 27th, 2021, everything changed. On top of announcing Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, a new game called Pokemon Legends Arceus was revealed. This game seemed to be different, more action-packed Pokemon game where you have to manually throw Pokeballs to catch Pokemon, and you can and you can even do rolls to get away from Pokemon quicker. It seemed really good from the start, and Game Freak even decided to develop this game instead of Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, so we knew we were getting something good from this game. And when January 27, 2022 finally came, everybody was shocked at how good the game was. Hey guys. This is Gaming 8, and today I will be reviewing Pokemon Legends Arceus, a Pokemon game that everybody wanted. First up is the story, and I'll try not to spoil anything late game because this game has a very big story, so I'll just keep my explanation very basic. The game starts with you encountering Arceus itself, but when you wake up you have no idea where, or most importantly, when, you, you are. You'll soon find out that you are in an ancient version of modern day Seno, which is at the time was called Sui. The professor of this region, Professor Laventon, informs you that you fell out of the sky, and you'll soon join him at the Galaxy working at the Galaxy team. The Galaxy team is currently working on building the world's first Pokedex, so it is your job to catch every Pokemon in, in his Sui. However, and there are some minor mid-game spoilers here. There are also five noble Pokemon that were struck by lightning, making them super powerful, and they could be endangering the entire region. So you have to calm each of these nobles and return them to the normal Pokemon. All five of these Pokemon are Pokemon supported by either the Diamond or Pearl Clan that will help you calm down these normal Pokemon. I'm going to stop there because I will be revealing spoilers if I go any farther. But yeah, you get the point. This game has a very deep and intense story, and it is, in my opinion, one of the coolest Pokemon stories. Next, I'm going to talk about the new Pokemon in this game, which are which are seven of them, fully new in Pokemon in 16 Hisuian forms. I'm not going to talk about all of them, as a few of them include spoilers. In fact, for one of these Pokemon, I don't even know about because I haven't finished every mission yet, I've just completed the main story. Six or seven of the new Pokemon are Weirdeer, Cleavor, Ursaluna, Basculegion, Sneasler, and Overquill. Of these, I actually like all these quite a bit. However, my favorite is Overquill, because I used it on my team. Starting off the, with the Hisuian forms, all three of the starters in this game got Hisuian forms. This is because the starters in this game are Decidueye, Typhlosion, and Samurai which are all Pokemon in older generations. Unfortunately, Typhlosion and Samurai got designs that are very similar to the originals. Hisui and Decidueye, on the other hand, has a completely different and awesome design, so that's why I picked it. Out of the other Hisui forms I haven't mentioned yet, Hisui and Growlithe and Arcanine are by far my favorites, and I'm a little sad I didn't use it on my playthrough, as they are really cool. But overall, I like the new Pokemon added here, especially considering this is still a Generation 8 game, so new Pokemon were unnecessary to begin with. Next up, I'm going to talk about overworld mechanics, because this is the main reason people prefer this Pokemon game to the majority of other Pokemon games. This will be a very unorganized category, because the majority of this stuff doesn't really fit anywhere else in this video. This game is every Pokemon appear in the overworld, similar to Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. In this game, you can actually catch wild Pokemon without battling them by simply throwing a Pokeball at them in the overworld. However, you want to try and stay stealthy, because if the Pokemon spots you, they can have different reactions. Some weaker Pokemon will run away from you if they spot you, and a few Pokemon just don't care and won't move, but the majority of the Pokemon will become aggressive and try to attack you. They will try to do actual attacks in the overworld to try and hurt the player. If the player gets hurt enough in a short period of time, they will black out. 
you can do roles in this game to try to avoid these attacks, which is really cool that it makes Pokemon more of an action game, which is what I've been dying to see in a Pokemon game for a while now. This means there can actually be normal functioning boss fights in a Pokemon game, which is actually crazy. And this is what the noble Pokemon are for also. So we can really see the potential for of Pokemon boss fights, mixing the action gameplay like Legends Arceus with the RPG elements of any other game. There are also alpha Pokemon in this game, which are especially strong Pokemon that are always aggressive and if you battle them they'll have stat boosts. This is a really cool feature, as there are multiple Pokemon in this game that can be caught only through alphas, making final evolutions actually feel stronger than the rest of the evolution line. Since this game has a Breath of the Wild styled map, you'll be rewarded with exploring with a bunch of items in the overworld, as well as some unique Pokemon. The map is also very big, so there are ride Pokemon that you can use to get around the map quicker. The ride Pokemon are both the new Pokemon and the Hisuian forms in this game. Overall, I know this was a somewhat long section, but I really enjoy every, th every single thing I mentioned in the section as it makes this game feel more alive than any other Pokemon game. Next up, I'm going to talk about the new battle mechanics of this game, because this game puts less importance on battling, so there are some big changes to make it more simple. First of all, the sleep and freeze status conditions have been replaced with drowsy and frostbite. Drowsy is kind of just like paralysis where you fail to move sometimes. I personally prefer sleep to this, as drowsy acts basically the exact same as paralysis, and even though sleep is almost the same as freeze, the second status condition is Frostbite, which will hurt the player every turn and lower special attack instead of physical attack like Burn. I prefer this to Freeze because honestly nobody ever uses Freeze mostly. However, I could see situations where it would be better to give opposing Pokemon Frostbite instead of Burn or Poison. A smaller change is that flinching has been removed in this game. But what is in my opinion by far the most important and cool change to the battle style is Action Order. A turn doesn't always include both Pokemon attacking anymore. Depending on the speed of your Pokemon, you can move twice before your opponent gets to move once. I find this to be really cool, except for when this happens. To make this gimmick work even better, they added strong and agile moves. The strong style makes attacks stronger, but makes your Pokemon slower. Agile style makes your Pokemon attack weaker, but makes your Pokemon faster so you can maybe attack multiple times in a row. I really enjoy this feature, as it adds more strategy to the battles and since it shows you the turn order, you can decide what the best move for you to do is, as you can now have 12 different choices instead of just 4. There are 5 different areas in the map in Pokemon Legends Arceus. Unfortunately, these aren't interconnected with each other and you have to choose which area to travel to before leaving Jubilee Village. The first of them is, Obsili of, is Obsidian Field Lens, which is a basic grass area that is home to a lot of normal type and early game Pokemon. Next up is the Crimson Mirelands, which is a very weird area I don't really know how to explain, but in my experience it is home to mostly poison types. Cobalt Coastlands is an area that I have a love-hate relationship with. I love the visuals of this area and the entire land section of this area, and the volcano is extremely cool, but I dislike the water areas just because it has an just because it is really annoying to catch Pokemon in the water from my experience. If it wasn't obvious, there are a lot of water types in this area. Coronet Highlands is a mostly very forgettable area, but I really like the part of this area that is actually Mount Coronet. And for the main Pokemon type, I honestly don't know, maybe ground? Alabaster Icelands is the last area in this game, but honestly in my opinion it's kind of forgettable. Like it has nothing special that no other areas have. This area is expected has mostly ice types. I like these areas, but honestly I kind of wish the entire map was interconnected. Now onto the visuals, which are simil similarly to every other Pokemon game on the Switch, they are controversial. I think these graphics are... alright. Not terrible, but they definitely could have been better. A few areas, especially Cobalt Coastlands, look really good in this game, as I think the water and lava in this game look really good. However, a lot of the textures, such as the grass texture which is used a lot in this game, look kinda bland and boring. 
I'll give credit where credit is due. Crimson Myrlands is a very unique idea for a location in this game, but in my opinion, it does not look very good. However, unlike Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, this game at least used the right art style. It went in full 3D instead of this. Yeah, I might like Sword and Shield graphics, but at least I can admit that this is ugly. I think Breath of the Wild's graphics look amazing, and they use a similar art style as this game. Like seriously, look at them side by side, it's a pretty big difference. But anyways, in conclusion, I think this game has a good art style, but the graphics look a bit bland and I wish they put more effort, more effort into perfecting the visuals. And finally, we have the soundtrack. Now I thought this section was going to be very similar to how I would talk about Breath of the Wild songs, but after listening to the OST, wow, how did I not notice a lot of these amazing songs during my playthrough? Like I noticed a few very good ones like Professor Lavington's theme in the Wild Encounter song, but wow, there are just so many great themes I completely missed, including the overworld themes which are just amazing. Unfortunately, I do have a criticism with the OST in this game. But it's not that the songs are bad, far from it in fact. I'm actually just a little bit disappointed that I didn't get to notice these amazing songs in my original playthrough, even though when I play games like Kirby and the Forgotten Land or even other Pokemon games I notice them immediately. I think the main reason for this is how much the songs change, because while you're in the overworld, either A, you are getting a lot of sound effects from catching Pokemon or picking up items, or B, you are battling a lot of Pokemon, making it so that the song changes to the wild battle music, which is great, but it isn't the overworld three themes. Anyways, if you couldn't figure out, I absolutely love the OST in this game. In conclusion, this game only has a few very minor flaws such as the sometimes bland visuals, and it is overall a masterpiece of a game. Whether it's the overworld expo exploration, the interaction with your Pokemon, or the simplified but still fun battle style that you love, this game is still great either way. Even the story is complex for a Pokemon game. If you noticed, in this entire video the only big flaw I mentioned was the visuals. This, is this my favorite Pokemon game in the series? No, because I absolutely love the 3DS games more than I should. Is it objectively the best Pokemon game? Absolutely. Overworld exploration is something Pokemon has needed for years, and Sword and Shield got close to achieving it, but its unpopular factors led to it being called a bad game. Overall, I give this game a 9 out of 10. Very strong game that is, in my opinion, the closest we've gotten to a, po to a perfect Pokemon game. Anyways guys, I'm going to go back to grinding the shining Shinx I found yesterday at the time of scripting. So yeah guys, this video is going to be done. Like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Bye bye.